and welcome back to another video. In this video, it is more about ants. Yes, a lot more ant information. If you don't see my last video on ants, I think it was the first one in about eight months or so, and quite a few people were vaguely interested. So I thought I'd do another one on very hard to keep ants and very, very easy to keep ants if you haven't had an ant farm before. I know, now it's technically called a formicarium, which is an ant farm. So gone are the days of getting a few ants from outside, dumping them in a little tank and wondering why they die. Now you can buy queens online that are already fertilized. They lay eggs, the eggs turn into larvae and then the larvae turn into little ants. And then after about a year or so, you can have a giant ant farm like this. Now it depends on the species. So if you haven't seen my last video, there'll be a link at the end of this video. But these are meat ants, and meat ants are one of the fastest growing ants you can get in Australia. Yes, all they do is breed. There's all oh, little larvae sitting in that tube because of the high humidity in the tube. If we open up one of these nests, there will be a lot of larvae in there. That's those little tiny white things. Those are eggs. There's larvae. There's lots and lots of ants. And all this is connected. So all these little nests which are 3D printed and then got a porous concrete, that is where all their larvae live because they have different humidity levels for different stages of growth. Now not all ants will turn into a giant nightmare like this in about two and a half years and this was a single queen two and a half years ago. I don't even know where the queen is at the moment. I'm pretty sure she is hidden away under there somewhere. She's not in this nest. There are a lot of ants. <laughs> now I have just extended this setup again. And the good thing with ants is all you need to do is get a glass tank, have a solid lid on top, drill some holes for ventilation, which is what these holes are here, which is just pretty much mesh siliconed around the hole and drill a couple of holes for pipes. And then you can connect the pipe up to different tank setups. So I think in my last video, if you saw, I was saying I was just going to extend it. So I've added another tank there. The tank that was there is now up the top there. If we can kind of see in there, there are a lot of ants in there. Let me find a little dodgy light, which is that thing there. Yes, a lot of ants. So I am currently extending all the way along the top. So I'll just have a couple more tanks up there. And again, all you need to do is drill a little hole like that, run your tubing down. There's ants going up and down tubing. And then yeah, away you go. So yeah, another tank there. I can run tubing from that to that, then that down to there. And it's a lot easier than it sounds. Now, yes, do they escape? Not that often. You don't want them escaping because picking up ants is never a fun thing. And yes, they do bite. And that gets us to what are easy ants to keep. If you're a beginner and you want a pet ant, let me grab this light from up here. Down here, we have some sugar ants. And these are probably one of the easiest ones to keep. Now, wherever they are, now this whole colony in here, which I cannot see, so I'll put some footage on screen, is about the same age as that giant colony. So sugar ants will not get out of hand. They take a long, long time to actually multiply and build up their numbers. What I might do is take that lid off, famous last words. That's when the ants just rush out. No, they don't. Ah, there they are there. We'll zoom in. And those are sugar ants. Now they look tiny, but they're not that small. They are a pretty big ant. They don't really bite. Now they can, but they're not nippy or anything like a meat ant is. Really awesome first ants. And that is a little test tube, which is buried in the substrate. A couple of test tubes in there. That is a little ant water thing. Oh, there's one almost getting out. Okay, now we need to put the lid back on. Watch my girls, watch my girls. Down, 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 down. <laughs> yes, so don't open the lid and film ants because they are pretty smart little things and they're going to realize that the door is open. Well, the top. If we can focus, 
Yeah, okay, we're not focusing through the high humidity, but they are sugar ants, awesome first ants. Now, an ant that you do not want as a first ant are these guys, which are bull ants. Now, they are one of the largest ants in Australia, if we can focus. One of the worst ants to keep as your first pet are these things. Look at that. So that is a pyroformis, which is a type of bull ant. They are very big, very angry, venomous. So they're sort of like a wasp with no wings. That is her larvae there. Now, this is the problem with keeping bull ants is they are very, very smart ants. I've tried a few times before with sort of mixed success. I am trying again. Now, they're a little bit different than some of the basic ants. They are smart. They're really susceptible to noises and movements. She has just taken all her larvae out of that little test tube and that is her test tube home in there. And just as I'm talking about her there, next door, another one has actually come out of her test tube and she's watching me talk. I know, they are very, very smart ants. So this one is another queen, this is a pyroformis. She is in a test tube there. And in the end of the test tube, as you can see with this little one here, there's a little bit of cotton and then water. So that creates a humid area for her little nest. And that's where she's gonna lay her eggs and have her larvae. Yeah, she's just listening to me now like, why are you talking near me? They have really, really good eyesight. Yeah, I don't wanna disturb them too much. Now, the problem with this one is she has taken all her larvae out of that test tube and placed them there. Because I've just got them, they moved, traveled in the post, and unfortunately, that is always gonna stress them out. Hopefully, she's still gonna look after her larvae, and she seems to be. I think she just got them there because she likes the humidity in that area. So as that dries out, she'll probably pop them back in the tube. Now, I have another couple of different types. There is another one right in that tube there. I don't think we can focus, but that white thing is a larvae. And there is a big Brevanova queen in there. And, oh, there she is there, because she can hear me. Yet another queen. So bull ants are not recommended as a first ant. They are very shy, very sensitive to movement, as I said. Yeah, you can try, but oh, they are not cheap either. So you're looking at anything between $150 and $300 a year just for one queen ant. Now these are pretty big. That is a good three to four centimeters long. I know, doesn't look big, but it's big. <laughs> now she has taken all her larvae out of the test tube, which was there. And she's dug a little area in there and she has a larvae under that rock. Ah. Anyway, basic setup with one of these is you want good airflow. Now, a few ways that I failed in the past is I don't think I had enough airflow. I had a couple of holes in the top, but not in the side. So I've got one air hole on the side, one up there. So the air will actually push through. So there's decent ventilation. There is a little water dish, there is a honey dish. There is a moist area which is in there. Now, because the substrate was a little bit moister than these ones, she's decided that she wants to put her larvae under there. And, oh, I can almost see one. That no, camera doesn't really show it up. But yes, when that dries out, she will probably move the larvae back under there. Now, the ants themselves don't eat, so they just want nectar, which is like here, pure honey or a sugar water solution. You can buy commercial sort of foods for them and stuff like that but they do want crickets to feed the larvae because the larvae will eat crickets until they morph into an ant. Once they cocoon and turn into an ant, yeah, they don't eat. They just drink sugar water solution or honey. And yeah, any food that's high protein, they'll actually grab and take it to the babies. Oh, she's out there. So super cool ants. So we'll see how we go with these. If there's never another update on the bull ants, you'll know that they did not make it, but we're gonna have a good go at them. Now, I have tried heat cords and heat pads in the past. Yes, in here, the temperature gradient ranges from about 15 degrees to about 30. Oh, she is huge, check her out. That is a big ant. Such a cool ant though. So the queens obviously are a little bit bigger than the workers. 
but as they mature and there's multiple workers, once you get about 30 to 100 workers, some of the workers are about the same size as the queen, which is pretty huge. That is a 20 mil test tube to give you an idea in diameter. So she is a big ant and she knows I'm talking. <laughs> Don't want to disturb her too much. So if you are going to keep ants, try and keep them away from noisy areas with pets running back and forward. Note how Benji is not in here. And yeah, you don't want kids banging on the tank or anyone banging on the tank for that matter. So stay super, super quiet around your ants and they should go well. Anyway, that's just a quick update. If you want to know more about sugar ants, comment down below or I'll try and do another video on beginner ants and go through all the basics with them. Yeah, I would stay clear from bull ants as awesome as they are. If you want ants that just will mass produce and go crazy and you can have a giant ant farm in like about six months, Go your meat ants, yeah. They will get out of control and you will need lots and lots of area for them, but super, super cool. And there's heaps of awesome nests you can buy online and in stores now, so go for it. Anyway, see you in the next video. If you wanna watch the other video, it's all be on the screen around about now. And thank you heaps to all my members. See you then.